Hello YouTube land, welcome to Robot Masters, our very first head-to-head -head competition up against the S9 on the left and the i7 on the right. The first video challenge is going to be with bathroom rugs. I put these bathroom rugs on slick hardwood floor on purpose so they easily slide around. Also, some of the bathroom rugs have their tags hanging out to see if these vacuums will suck them up. So these bathroom rugs range in various size, thickness, material types. So we'll see how well the vacuums can do. In the past, some vacuums will pull, push, and ultimately get them stuck in an odd position. This small bathroom rug is hard for vacuums with high suction because it can easily pull and maneuver the rug. I stuck this one in the corner because this will simulate a bathroom rug up against underneath the sink. And this is another scenario where it's going up against a wall. We'll see how well it can transition. I mainly focused on the maneuverability and how well it can suction. So I'm just going to do Pringles, uh, just a light sprinkle on each rug and one in the center of the hardwood floor, one chip per rug. And I'm going to put some chips along the edge, see how well the robot vacuum can edge clean as well. This isn't about how well it can deep clean or pick up objects and debris. It's more about maneuverability and see if they can actually complete the job, get on top of the rug, clean up the chips. I sped up the cleaning process for your convenience and to make sure the wife doesn't come home to a giant mess or I would have been in deep dog poo poo. The first lucky contestant is the Roomba i7. The Roomba i7 only offers one power setting at 17 CFM of airflow. I set the Roomba to do one pass. I'm not too concerned about how well it can deep clean, it's more about how well it can maneuver and pick up the chips on top of the bathroom rugs. I like how much quieter the i7 is compared to the Roomba S9. But the Roomba S9 does have a significant higher airflow at 22 CFM. Also, the Roomba S9 is only a few decimals, but you will clearly hear it in this video. How much louder the S9 is versus the i7. You notice that the Roomba bumped into that carpeting. It's kind of lifted up, and this is a problem. Is Once the carpet starts bending and getting folded up, it causes a lot of problems. So Roomba owners have complained that the side brush spins too quickly. This relates into scattered debris. Sometimes the side brush does more harm by scattering debris than putting debris in its extractors. There is a benefit to having a faster spinning side brush. More revolutions per minute means it can get into stubborn dirt along the edges better. So the best implementation of the side brush on a robotic vacuum is the Roborock. I found that the Roborock has a dedicated sensor on the side of the robot which allows the spinning side brush to spin up along the walls. But when it's in the open area, the side brush will slow down. And if the side brush detects a tangle, it can untangle itself by reversing the in direction. Looks like the i7 is doing fairly well picking up most of the scattered debris. It hasn't gotten stuck or been pushing around the carpets. So as it stands, it looks like the i7 is doing really well. So on this brown rug, it's pretty thick at about 0.25 inches. So this is where a higher CFM will come into play and pick up these particles. Notice how easy it can just roll over this lightweight rug. I suspect the S9 will have troubles because its extractors are closer to the ground and with the higher CFM, it will pull on the rug and drag it along. So here's where the Roomba rolls over the tag and sucks it up. It is able to let go. I love these dual extractor designs, but they're terrible with cables. They will suck up all your iPhone and Android cables.
Okay, we'll see how well this longer side brush on the Roomba i7 does versus a smaller, lower RPM side brush on the Roomba S9. iRobot clearly states that the Roomba S9 does have a better side brush cleaning performance. We'll give that a test. So Roomba should lower its RPM in this case scenario on the side brush because you can see it's just scattering it around. If you're doing just a single pass, it will leave the scattered debris around. So in this scenario, you probably want to do a double run. So here's all the scattered debris that the robotic vacuum left. Whenever I set a robotic vacuum out to do a cleaning job, I always have it on the highest section level and do a double pass or as many passes as the robot vacuum can. So the robotic vacuum is done with this job. You can see that on the blue indicated light. So here's what the i7 picked up. Okay, here's the Roomba S9. It is on a single pass at its highest power mode. The Roomba S9 offers three power modes, whereas the i7 only offers one. It is pretty louder than the i7 as shown. Throughout the rest of the video, I had to lower the volume because Trying to talk over the Roomba S9 was impossible. Because the S9's extractors are so low to the ground due to not having front wheels, it's having trouble transitioning onto this other road. The S9 does do a better job picking up more debris on this brown road. The Roomba makes it on top of this rug once it hits it at a different angle. So here's where the high airflow and lower to the ground extractors can wreak some havoc. It's just recommended that these small rugs are picked up because sometimes even Though they can just move them around, it could cause damage to the rugs or to the machine if they get caught up inside them. So here's the Roomba S9 doing an edge cleaning. It doesn't quite get up to the corner, leaves some debris back there, but it does do a significant better job not scattering the debris around. S9 did a lot better job picking up the debris on this brown carpet versus the i7. The S9 also by default will do a secondary edge cleaning sweep. We'll take a quick look at how much debris and dirt the S9 picked up. I don't know if it's been happening with others, but there's been a significant delay versus the i7's self-emptying bin.
stay tuned for the next video. Thanks.